ratios. For the newcomers, repeating again, anyone who stayed more than four or five minutes is absent. Uh, you may feel free to go back, uh, you're all absent. And you will be until the end of the course. Liquidity ratios number one is simple, easy, common sense, straightforward. Uh, it is the current ratio. Well, maybe I can use the red color now. Current. In a current ratio, it's a very simple question. What are my current assets and what are my current liabilities? And you divide current assets over current liabilities. Current means convertible to asset, to cash within a year. Current liability means payable in cash within a year. Now, ideally, you want this ratio to be a little more than 1. Maybe 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.5. So, a number point one, uh, sorry, a number greater than 1 is good. But you don't want a huge number like 3, 5, or 7. This means that you got way too many current assets. Again, the trick, as you will see in all of these ratios, is pretty much the same. Having a certain number is better. If it's lower, it doesn't look good. But if it's way too high, again, there's probably some mismanagement, some other problem. So there's something like a range where things look good. So if you see current liabilities like 3, 5, or 7, again, it's the same thing. It doesn't mean it's bad. It means you ask more questions. It provides a simple clue. If it's less than 1, it simply means one thing. Oh, we're short on current assets and we got more liability, current liabilities so within a year sooner or later we're going to run out of money unless you have some sort of cyclicality for example right now uh, well some sort of cyclicality as in you expect let's say on Christmas to make a lot of sales for example but you didn't order yet your uh, inventory but again, even if you order your inventory, do you order them on credit? Do you pay them on debt? In general, having current assets less than uh, the ratio is usually a big alert. It will alert you quickly that you may have to do long-term financing or liquidate a long-term asset. Okay, somehow you got to increase the current asset or reduce the liability. One way or another. Next one is called the quick ratio. And I discussed it already last time, or the time before, I remember I discussed. A lot of times, well, current assets will always include inventory, but a lot of times, inventory is not very liquid. So when you're doing this particular ratio, you want to remove inventory for a slightly better for a slightly better measure. So you say current assets, next one, minus inventory. And then you do the same divided by current liability. Uh, as I was explaining, I remember I gave you the examples. If you're a furniture store, furniture is very illiquid and hard to sell. Watches are 
very illiquid and hard to sell. So anything that's highly personalized, especially shoes, are very hard to sell. Uh, if you may have been, or especially women, exposed to the cosmetics, cosmetics industry, very hard to sell. Yeah, you may be easy uh, for you, it's easier to buy. We're going to have hundreds of brand names with hundreds of chemicals, okay, with hundreds of colors. It's like next to impossible, you know, it's extremely hard, you know. You see, uh, you go into a shop, they may have two or five hundred lipsticks, and it's still hard to pick the perfect one, or the right one. Okay, if you're going to spend it ten dollars, you might as well get the uh, perfect. Because it's highly individual. Same things applies for furniture. Furniture applies not only for taste, but also how it fits your house, how it fits your room. So you remove the inventory. That's a slightly better ratio. You deal separately with inventory. You analyze separately inventory turnover and stuff. So that's number two. Let's see what's number three. Number three is, and uh, now I still have a few of these left. You should have them back. Now you can come back and grab, uh, again, I don't have two or three for a person, but some people were missing, didn't get one last time. Uh, number three, let's take a look, is average collection period. This refers to accounts receivable. It refers to accounts receivable. It's a simple question. When you offer your customer credit, does the customer pay back in one day, or do they pay back in one week, or do they pay back in one month? For you having the textbook, for you having the textbook, it's page 97. Page 97. Okay. And it's equation three. Equation three. All right, you find it there in the middle of the page. Average collection period. So basically, it's a simple question. Well, tell me what are my accounts receivable? Accounts receivable. And then you have, a, oh, here's a, that's the better one. The second one is better. Daily credit sales. Daily credit sales. So today you sell, let's say, uh, on credit for $1,000. Tomorrow, you have more customers, you sell for $1,000 more. The third day, you sell for $1,000 more. Let's move a little bit the camera over here so that people can see. Uh, I mean, it's common sense, but it's nice to see. So today, let's say, number one, you sell for $1,000. That's the first of the month. On the second day of the month, you sell again for $1,000. That's the average, that's the daily average. On the third, you sell on credit for 1,000. So what's the total so far? The total so far is 1,000 plus one plus one, a total of 3,000, okay? And you keep doing this for many days. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, okay. So, so far, everything that's sold on credit, meaning the daily credit sale is 1,000, you got 11 days, and the total credit is 11,000. Now comes the next thing, now comes the next thing. You sell on credit for 1,000, but the first guy pays you back. 
The first guy pays you back. How much is your total credit? The same, 11,000. In other words, you sold 1,000, but this guy over here, uh, I, okay, I can use that little arrow over here, pays you back. So you're back to 11,000. Well, next thing. You sell again for 1,000, number two pays you back. Two from this guy pays you back. Well, what's your now again? What's your total? 11,000 again. Okay, well, what happens next? Again, number 14. And this is number three. And if you go on, 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 and on, you do the same thing. This is day number N, could be whatever day, and this is going to be N minus is that? So, what is the average? Average <coughs> daily is one. Thousands, but uh, account receivable, account receivable is how much? Eleven thousand. And the average collection period is collection is eleven days. It's actually that you're moving it, you gotta zoom in. It's because it's not gonna be easy to see. You gotta zoom in nice and big and get these big letters. You gotta be able to read them on the screen, right? If you can read them on the screen, that's probably readable. So the average is one 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 per day. The total is eleven. And on average, you collect 11 days. Well, now we can change the numbers and see that if the average collection is 20 days, your accounts receivable will accumulate and stabilize at 20,000. Well, this is actually very simple, very common sense. So all you need to do for the average collection period, 20 days, is divided on average, again, if you're averaging, the accounts receivables to the daily sales. All right. Well, it's a very good information. In, it tells you, you know, how quickly you get your money back. So, remember, do you have money? Here, the question is, within 20 days, you're going to get the money back within 20 days or within 11 days depending on the exam. Now, what about daily credit sales? That particular, what's the average daily sale? Okay, well that's very simple and very easy. It's just common sense. If you have sales for one year, whatever your total sales for one year are, you get the average daily by dividing 3, 6, 5. So if you got a total sales for one year of 365,000, when you divide by 365, that's going to be the number. That's the same as 365 days per year or as many days per year as you're open. You're probably open 365, but maybe you're open less. And again, you still have these, we just call them account receivable. All right, so that's number three. Question? Yes? Um, average daily is one or one thousand? Oh, it's the same thing, one thousand. Yeah, one thousand, correct. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking in terms of thousands, so yeah, everything's one thousand, this is twenty thousand, but these are the days, okay? So you need to keep track of what is what. So the collection period, the period is days. Okay. Well, you can have it as a fraction of a year, but it doesn't make as much sense as in 
11 days. 11 days is a very good common sense for a business person. Next one. Let's see. Okay, accounts, receivable, turnover, ratio. What's this? All right, let's write it out and see what it is and what it means. Accounts, receivable, turnover, turnover, ratio. All right. <clears throat> Just temporarily, a very simple, common sense, basic idea in business is that of a turnover. Of a turnover. And turnover simply means how quickly things move around. How quickly things move around. So, turnover can be associated with a lot of things, okay? For example, it may be associated with inventory. You buy your inventory, let's say you buy 20 iPhones, and you sell one iPhone a day. So, you sell them over 20 days, okay? That's very simple. So, you buy them, you sell one a day, you sell them within 20 days, after 20 days, you have to reorder again, over and over again. So the turnover has two ways of thinking about it. The first way to think about it is 20 iPhones, one a day is 20 days. 20 days is in number of days, number of days. That's the one simple way to think. The other one simple way is number per year. So if it's 360 days the year and it's 20 days, you say how many times per year and you divide 360 by 20. So it gives you 13 times per year. So on average, you turn them over 13 times, 13 times. This is the same thing as asking the question, how many times per year I have to order these iPhones or these motorcycles or whatever you do. So you can have turnover on practically anything that kind of keeps moving. So that's the turnover. Now let's see what is the turnover for the accounting, for the account receivables. You have annual credit sales. Annual credit sale. So this is the total <coughs> amount of sales that you make on credit and divide by the account receivable. account receivable. Let's see. So, total annual credit sales. Uh, okay, I can, do, I can do this example over here. So, daily, let's say, annual credit sales. So, one daily sale is 1,000. Do the same thing. The first day, 1,000. The second day, 1,000. Okay? The third day, 1,000. And for 365, you make on credit, you make on credit, what's the total credit sales for one year? Annual credit sales. First day, you sell on credit 1,000. Okay, maybe I need to write it. 1K, 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 1K. So, the total annual is annual, 365. Annual, three, annual, 365,000, okay? And now, account receivable. Well, how much is account receivable? Well, account receivable, if you pay you for, let's say, uh, 20 days, okay? The account receivable, so they pay you for 20 days. What's the account receivable?
account receivable is 20,000. 20, now, ignore here, ignore here the 365, let's just make it 360 because I can easily divide the numbers. So, what's the ratio? What's the ratio? 18. So, in this case, it becomes 18. Well, what does it mean? 18 times 18 times. Okay. So, you turn over the account receivables 18 times. So, you get the account receivables. For the first, it's 20 days. That's the first turnover. Then account receivables, second day. That's the second turnover. Okay, so the first 20 will represent the first turnover. The second 20 will represent the second turnover. The third 20 will represent the third turnover. And then the fourth, four. Because it's 20 days in the year, you turn them over 18 times. Remember what I wrote up here? Is that you can think in terms of how many times per year, or you can think, think in terms of how many days. Okay? So that's the turnover ratio. Let's see if we have something else on this ratio in the textbook or we move on to the next. Okay, well, when you, when you move on to the next page, 98, so when you move to page 98, they gave you in the example that on average the accounts turnover is 16 or 17 times. So you turn over 17 times a year. All right, let's see. Oh, okay. The next, actually, very important question for every business is the inventory journal. Inventory journal. Now, for all of these, for all of these, you can just say, uh, well, when you use current, you have to use the word ratio, current ratio. You cannot just say current, current can mean thousand things. For the second one, acid test, you got to say ratio. Now, average collection period, that's how it is. Uh, and accounts receivable turnover. So for some of the others, they have ratio, ratio, ratio. If you have the word ratio, you may possibly sometimes skip the ratio. So you can say inventory turnover ratio, or just shorten it to inventory turnover. Inventory turnover. And it's exactly the same logic, and it's exactly the same thinking. You divide by inventories. Inventory or inventories. Now, notice the following simple thing. Notice now, pay attention. Here, you got account receivable turnover. So this account receivable goes in down into the denominator. Here is the inventory goes into the denominator. So. And turnover ratios, usually this part over here goes into the denominator. So what's up on top? Oh, it just cost of goods sold. Uh, we have a cost of goods sold. So this is the value of the inventory for one year. Okay, so this is kind of like annual sales. So annual value of inventory. So what's the total value of the inventory that you were selling? And then what is the in current inventory? How many times? Uh, do you want a simple example? Uh, let's make a nice round number. Maybe not quite correct, but you'll understand it. Let's round that an iPhone is costs 
let's say, $500. That will be an approximately correct number if the retail price is $700, okay? So, price is $700 for one phone, that's the retail price. But when you acquire it as a business, the cost for the business will be 500. So, 500 is the cost, you sell it for 700. So, your markup is $200, and the $200 on 500 cost is 40%. Okay, so, cost of goods sold. And, let's now move on and make it even better, and say, you sell one iPhone a day. So, you sell one iPhone a day, and you have 500 per iPhone. What is the cost of goods sold for a year? For one year. Well, the cost of goods sold for one year will be, I'm just rounding 360. That's by number of phone, uh, per phone. 360 days, you sell one phone for 500. I could have made it a whole lot better with two phones and round it up to 1,000. Okay, but let's keep it like that. What's this number now? What is this number now? Yeah, now that's what the iPhone is for. The iPhone is not to play games, right? Hmm? Yeah, it's about one, eight, and how many zeros? It should be 180,000. 180,000, okay? So that's the cost of goods sold. Well, how many inventories will you keep? How many inventories you will keep? That's another question now. Well, first answer, if you keep inventory, if your inventory is 10 iPhones, okay, so if you keep 10 iPhones, then each is worth 500. The inventory will be 5,000, right? And what's the turnover ratio? When you divide 180 over 5, what's the turnover? Again, iPhone. You divide this number by this number. What's the ratio? What's the ratio? Hmm? What's the ratio? 36. 36, sure. <laughs> Again. Uh, pay attention, this is very simple. The year has 360 days. You have 10 phones. You sell one phone a day, you're going to run out of phone in 10 days. After 10 days, you're going to reorder again. And after 10 days, reorder again. And after 10 days, reorder again. If the year is 360 days, and you order every 10 days, you're going to order 36 times. This is the same as uh, the first batch of 10 is sold in 10 days, the second is sold in 10 days, the third is sold in 10 days. You're going to sell your inventory 36 times. That's a fairly, so on average, your inventory is sold 36 times. Now, ask a seller, a guy who sells watches. The guy who sells watches. Uh, now, of course, some are cheaper, some are more expensive, but let's say a guy will have selling the watches. He may easily have 500 watches, okay? And he would be selling in a day how many? He'd be selling in a day maybe two, okay? All right, so he'd be selling in one day two. So what's the average turnover? 250 days. And 250 days means that he turns his inventory over less than two times <coughs> a year. So he turns them over one and a half times a year. So if you're selling, let's say, watches, on average, your turnover ratio will be one, around one, meaning it's very hard to sell a watch, meaning you will have to wait a full year to sell a particular watch, okay? And that's normal. 
That's why I keep saying is, you can't just say, oh, the number of 36 is good, okay, and the number 2 is bad, okay? If you're selling rice, 36 may not be good enough, you know? Rice is easy to sell. You should have a faster turnover rate. And for watches, if it's two or three, it's good. So when you compare, the benchmark becomes very important. All right, so that's number five. Next question is, I want to jump around, actually, because uh, that's how I think. I'll jump around. The first question is, do we have money, okay? How liquid? So this basically tells you how liquid is my inventory, okay? Well, it's kind of like 10 days liquid, okay? Within 10 days, it turns into uh, cash, into a sale. How liquid is my account receivable, okay? Account receivable turnover ratio. Again, what is my average collection? How quickly I'm collecting money? The quick ratio is, do I have the cash to service my current liabilities? So, do I have the cash available? How quickly I get my cash here? How quickly I get my cash? Well, it takes me about 12 days, okay? And inventory is basically, how quickly can I convert inventory to cash? Well, now, notice there is some other little trick when you sell on credit. This inventory tur turnover ratio will tell you how quickly you convert inventory to account receivable. And then you got to add up how quickly you convert account receivable to cash. So if it takes on average 10 days to convert a, a, an iPhone to a sale and then it takes 20 days to collect from an iPhone to cash, the total is 20 plus 10, 30 days, okay? So you gotta wait 10 days to sell it, and then you gotta wait 20 days to collect your cash back, so it's 30 days. So you gotta think in terms of from inventory to account receivable to cash. From inventory to account receivable, let's say 15 days, from account receivable to cash, 15 days, so from inventory to cash takes or averages 30 days. So, how quickly convert inventory to receivable and eventually to <coughs> So that's common sense. And then I want to move, actually, again, I'm jumping to number four, profitability ratios. And profitability is associated with profit. Gross profit margin. Gross profit margin is simply, let's say, gross profit divided by sales. So here it's a simple question. The key word I was explaining before, the key word is the margin part. And you get the margin by dividing to sales. So you divide everything to sales. So you, you get your gross profit. When you divide it by sales, you get a gross profit margin. Okay? So whatever you divide by sales, you usually get that margin. Okay? So, what's your gross profit? Your gross profit, if you remember from the accounting income, was the total revenue minus the cost of goods sold. That's gross profit. Let's see what's next. Operating profit margin, OPM. Operating profit margin. Now, it should be fairly straightforward. Operating profit. Net operating income. So, becomes operating profit. 
happened? Divided by, is it sales again? Yes. yes. Now, what I'll do is that cheap trick when it says operating profit. The operating profit is simply the net operating income. So this is the same as net operating income. Now, if you remember I was explaining, and I'll repeat again, you take the word net, you take the word income, net income is the same as profit. So, when you say net income is the same as profit, net operating income becomes operating profit. Okay? This is a simple and easy way to, again, understand it and again to remember that. You got to use some logic. So let's stay straightforward. And then you have M for margin. Margin. And again, the margin still divides by sales. Again. Let's see what's next one. So basically, it's a simple question. When you make a sale, what percentage you can convert to gross profit? So you make a thousand dollar sale and how much is a gross profit? Let's say maybe 40%. How much is the net operating income? Maybe 20%. Okay. And then we'll have to have a pure profit. Okay, just profit margin, meaning net income margin. All right, so that's net operating income. And let me clarify, again, this is just repeating what I did two lectures ago. This is operating income is earnings before interest and taxes. So it's actually nicely shortened as EBIT. This is earnings before income and taxes. Okay, EBIT. Next one. Next one. Oh, net profit margin. Net profit margin. Let me run it out. Net profit margin. Again, if it's a margin in this particular case, it's always sales. Is it sales there? Okay. And then you say net profit. But net profit, it's kind of like a weird term. We don't use, we don't have that kind of term, net profit. What we have everywhere, the standard is net income. Remember, net income. You can just call it profit if you like. But net profit is a little weird. So, but net income is the correct, precise, legal terms. It is defined legally. It's defined everywhere in the world exactly the same way. So there is never a confusion about the word net income. But it's just net income divided by sales. Fairly straightforward. Operating return on Asset. Okay, that's a little trick. Operating return on assets. So, first you say operating return on assets. Well, it's got to be operating return on top. Yes. Uh, remember, I'm just going to copy operating return is the same as operating profit is the same as EBIT. EBIT. And this is on assets. On assets. So you simply divide by assets. So it's a simple question. 
for all of my assets, for everything that I've invested in the business, including the tables, including the projector, including the air conditioner, okay, including the laptop, so all short-term assets, all long-term assets, everything invested in the business, all the assets, how much profit am I making? And in this particular case, remember, it's how much operating profit I'm making, because it's going to be a separate question, how much net profit I'm making. Because you know you gotta pay some taxes, which can change, and you gotta pay some interest, which you may have or you may not have. So that's a fairly simple question, and it tells you, in a sense, the profitability or return on assets, and that's what it is: operating return on assets. What is my return on assets? It's a simple question. Do I make a lot of profit with my assets or little profit? And last one, so that you can go about your business, is, yeah, return on equity. Guys, I need numbers here, numbers here, numbers here. Number one, number two, number three, number four, and now comes number five. Let me take a look again. It is the most popular of all measures of profitability. I got another great chance to use my red color. Is return on equity. This is the big return on equity. This is like the most important of all questions. Equity is the same as the amount of investment. If you put in $20,000 in this business, that's your equity. You may borrow 10, you may borrow 20, you may borrow 50,000, doesn't matter. The question is, what is your return? Now here, the word return is exactly the same. Again, it's a little tricky. You gotta zoom in nice, okay is exactly the same as profitability. Profitability, okay? So, profitability on equity. Now, remember how we have here profitability on assets. So here, you put at the top equity, sorry, at the bottom is equity. Again, these assets come over here, and this equity comes over here, and return becomes profit. Of course, as I kept explaining, profit is exactly the same as net income. So, if you go there, it should be saying, Net income to equity, in this case, is common equity. But that's kind of like for any business, especially for investments, when you analyze a major corporation, the biggest and most important question to all investors is the return on equity. That's kind of like the big one. So if you need to analyze only one, and you got to look at only one, it's the return on equity that's relatively important. Now, coming back over here, if you need to look for liquidity of only one measure, the better measure is the, or the best is the quick ratio. Again, all of these give you clues. And then, of course, when you see a very large number or a very small number, you keep asking for the question, well, why the number is large, why the number is Love. All right, let me repeat for all the late people. If you're late more than three or four minutes, you're completely absent. I just went down uh, to the dean. I made the confirmation with him. Uh, I'm going to put in a little bit of a little bit of this thing. At least, hopefully, you show up on time. Okay, thank you. You are absent today.